Welcome back to another Create and Learn video where we make magic with technology. Today we're going to show you how to make a fading part for your obby. So at this point, we're going to assume that you've set up a few blocks in your obby. And if you don't know how to do that, you want to make sure that you check out our other video on how to create your first obby. Once you have a few blocks in place, it might be fun to make one of these parts just disappear into nothing. And that'll make it a lot harder because if I play this obby as it is right now, it's actually pretty simple because the parts aren't too far apart. They're not at weird angles and it might be kind of boring for an advanced player to try to play this obby. But if I was to make this red platform disappear, it would make it so that you'd have to go really fast across that platform in order to not fall out of the world. So let's get started. So what we want to do is we want to take our middle block here, the red one, and you'll notice over here in the Explorer, I have called this fading part and notice it's one word. It's a lot easier in your coding instead of using um, words that are what we consider strings that you have a one word name for your parts. So we're going to call our part fading part here. Okay. And to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to create a script for this part that tells it when it is touched, we want it to start fading until it's completely gone and then the player would fall through. So if you go over next to your fading part, you'll see the little plus sign. We're going to click on that plus sign. And if you don't see script towards the top, if you've never written a script before, you may have to search for it. You can always just start typing the word script in and click on that. Now, if you end up doing this to a lot of different parts or adding script to other parts in your obby, um, just having it called script is going to make things really, really confusing for you because every script will have the same name. So we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this one fade on touch. Notice again, one word, three words made into one word. And then we're going to go ahead and delete the default uh, hello world that it always starts off our scripts with because we're going to write our own script today. So looking at our, temp our um, base plate here, or our part, we are going to create a variable for the, this platform. We're going to call it a platform. Uh, and we're going to just create an empty function in there first so that we have somewhere to start. Now, a function is basically going to tell um, what to call this uh, platform. So we're going to call it platform. That's our variable name. And then we want to tell it, okay, this script is only attached to the parent, which in this case is fading part. So wherever we would want this script to uh, be located in our obby, we could copy and paste into any other parts as well when we're done with this one. And it'll only apply to the parts or the platforms that we apply it to. It won't apply to every single part in our obby. So right now we have a function and that is to fade. And of course your function has to have an ending. And then at the bottom, this is what creates the action of when it is touched actually fading. So platform touched, we want to connect this fade function. So now inside of our function, we want to go ahead and tell uh, this function what to do. So we want to add a little space inside this function. We're going to add some code in here that says, okay, this is how fade is going to work. And this is fade is the name of this function. So what we want to do is we want to create um, kind of a delayed fading process we could you know write a bunch of code that just continues in about 20 times um, but i don't know about you i like to make things simple and i like to make them as, with as little code and scripting as possible so there is a way to do that using a for loop so the for loop will say for every count that equals this amount i want you to accomplish this task and so for this uh activity that we want it to accomplish we are going to add in a piece of code here. And you'll notice that we, oh, I added an extra line. We don't need that. There we go. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure our indentation is in the right place. So every uh, internal loop or function inside a function, you want to make sure you tab over one place so that the um, game can actually understand your scripting. So for this case, we want our local function fade to do the following. For every count of one, for 10 times, we want you to take that transparency of our platform, which is up here, 
and we want to take the count number and divide it by 10. Now that may seem a little weird to understand, but basically what this is, is our control variable is right here. So every time it loops back to this for statement, it is going to count um, one more time up. And then the second value is what do we end at? Okay, and so we end at 10. So it's gonna take 10 times to get to the end of our loop. So then every time it goes through, we want that count number to be divided by 10. And so every time it gets a little lighter and a little lighter, a little lighter. And then one of the most important um, aspects of any for loop or any while loop that you create in Roblox is this wait statement. Now there is a default wait period for any loop in Lua. But the problem is if we don't put this wait statement in, it could go so quickly, because I think it's about a 20th of a second or a millisecond, um, then it'll actually crash your game. And we don't want that to happen to your awesome obby. So you want to make sure that you stick this wait time in. And you'll notice it's very small, because we want it to feel like it's um, fading very smoothly. You can make this wait time longer if you want it to take a little longer. Like say you have a, um, a longer platform that stretches out further and they need more time to get to the end of it. But for our case, it's a pretty short platform. So that's not going to affect us. So we're just going to make that wait time about one tenth of a second, 0 0.1. So let's go check out how this looks while we are in the game. We'll load up our play button at the top and you'll see, we can see the platform just fine. So let's see what happens when we touch it. Oh dear, it's going, it's going and it's gone. Okay, so it's working. Our platform disappears, but what do you notice happen? It doesn't come back. Not very fun if you fall through and have to try it again, right? So we need our platform to reappear so that especially if you have other users in the same server as you, the next person has the platform there to jump on in the first place. So let's go ahead and we'll tackle that and we'll get that working as well in our script. So the next part of our script is going to um, configure, okay, when do we bring that platform back and how does it feel? How does it make our character react if um, before it comes back? So there's a few more lines here that we want to add after the for loop end statement but inside are still inside our function. And that's these four lines. So we have, um, we have our platform, which if you remember, that's what we are calling um, in the script, we're calling our fading part. So uh, when this loop ends, we want to say, okay, guess what? Can collide is false. Because if you'll notice um, when I just did that run through, my character did not fall into space like we were hoping to see, right? And that's because there's this property. If you go down to your properties box on the right, and if you don't have that properties box, you can find it on your view tab up here at the top. Make sure that you have that active. Um, down here on our fading part, we have this property that is can collide and another one can touch. And when can collide is activated, that is what makes it so players um, don't fall through an object. So if you ever have an object that you want um, to be non-touchable, I guess, or you can't run on it, you want to fall through it, you would uncheck this box. Now we can't start that way with this one because what would happen is it wouldn't matter if it was transparent or not. Your character would just fall through automatically. Now that's a great trick to use in an obby if you they need to choose, like say from one of four paths that might be the right path to choose. Um, you may have seen this with like four colored blocks and they have to decide, is it the red, the green, the yellow, or the blue that I have to walk across to accomplish this part of the obby? And you fall immediately through the ones that have can collide turned off. But in our case, we want the collision to be there until the platform disappears, which is up here. So once the platform disappears, we want to tell it, okay, guess what? We're going to set can collide to false, and that way our characters, our players will fall through. Then we want to set another wait time, and this is totally up to you how long you want it to wait before that part comes back. If you have a really, really busy server and there's a lot of people playing, you may want it to come back a little faster, maybe two seconds. If it's just one player, three, four, five seconds is plenty because by the time they respawn, it will show back up. So then once the three seconds is over, in my case here, 
I want them to be able to touch the platform again and try to make it across. So now we have to go back and change that can collide back to true. So essentially what these three lines are saying is, okay, first of all, I'm going to uncheck this button in properties. I'm going to wait three seconds and then I'm going to recheck it. And it is all done with the scripting. And then of course we have to set our platform transparency back to the beginning where it is uh, completely solid and no longer transparent. So let's give that a try and let's see how that looks. So here we go, we can see it, it's all there. We can touch it, we can run across and then, oh, there we go, it's working. On the other hand, if I go back and respawn and try again, you'll notice it came back in plenty of time and I make it across, <laughs> which I didn't make it across. We may have to adjust the length of that. Uh, then when I look back at the platform, I would see it uh, respawn and I could try again if I needed to. So. so one thing you've probably noticed if you've tried it out at this point is that it seems to be a little glitchy when we run over that platform. See how it kind of flashes? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that's not going to be glitchy like it looks now. And what the reason that happens is because right now all we've done is set it up that if we are touching the platform, it's going to start the for loop. Well, every time your leg touches, leg, 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 it's going to restart the loop over and over again. So we don't want that to happen. So let's go back to our code. And what we want to do is we want to create what's called a debounce variable. In other words, what that does is it makes sure that the function only runs once the first time that your player touches the platform. And that way it won't be triggered every single time the player takes a step across the platform. So we're going to use a different variable that can be used to keep track of when the platform has already been touched. And um, we're going to add a couple more things here to our code already. The first one is we're going to create this function. And the function we're going to put, um, we're going to list it above the local function fade. So we're going to add this line, local is touch equals false. So our variable is is touched. So we're trying to check, okay, are we actually touching? Is the player actually touching the platform? So we want to start out with false. No, they're not. We're not going to, we're not going to be touching the platform there. And then we're going to do the second part, which is called checking the variable. So an if statement um, is really created to run the code in the fade function if the is touch variable is false. So we want to wrap the body of the function in an if statement when the condition is not is touched. So what we want to do is we want to add another function inside our first function. And if you remember, this is going to affect how we indent the code of our function. I mentioned that earlier. So we want to go ahead and press enter after what's now my line five here. And we're going to add uh, an if statement. It's going to, an if statement is a conditional that says if this is true or if this is false, then go ahead and do what's inside this function. Okay, so if it is not is touched, then our following lines are going to happen. Now, notice if and for are both on the same indentation. We want to go ahead and we want to make sure that all of these lines get indented one more time so that they're all within our new if statement, okay? And then of course we want this uh, not touch statement to also end. So we are going to tell it to end after the platform transparency returns to zero. So the three lines we just added are at my line three, local is touched equals false. And then our line six, if not is touched, then I want you to go ahead and start this loop and then of course we need to end that if function and notice they're at the same indentation level so that the code can be read. So you'll notice in line six, we have this if not, okay? And in Lua not uh, basically reverses the value of whatever follows it. And so as far as conditionals go, like if statements go, this means that if the first if statement behaves the same as the statements, with follow, then it will be true. So we're going to toggle this debounce um, by adding one more variable in here, or we're, we're going to bring our variable in here, okay? So because we want this to happen when we are actually touching. So what we want to do is we want to uh, give ourselves another line after if not is touched then. 
And we want to go ahead and say, okay, well now at this point, we are touching it. So is touched is true. Once again, we got to go through and we need to make sure that we go ahead and indent our further lines inside because guess what? We just created another um, layer to this, okay? And what that'll do is um, at the end then, after we have stopped touching it, we want it to set back to false like it was when we started it at line three. So at the end, before, after the platform transparency, um, we wanna go ahead and say, okay, well now, now that we've accomplished this entire script, this loop over and over 10 times, we wanna set our is touched variable back to false, which will stop the whole process of continuing this loop through over and over again. And then it will move on to end. And then the next player can take a shot at it. That's a lot of weird information for beginners, but really it's very straightforward. If you think about the fact that we wanna tell it, um, at first we're not touching the platform, and then when we do touch it, we wanna go ahead and uh, start our loop that takes our platform away and makes it more transparent. We wanna make sure that when it becomes transparent, it's uh, it, the player can no longer stand on it. We wanna wait three seconds. We wanna bring that platform back in collision and make it visible. And then we wanna set that initial is touched variable back to where it was in the beginning where nobody is touching it. So let's go ahead and run it and let's see how it goes with all those changes made. Here we go. Oh, look at that, much smoother, no more glitchy, and three seconds it comes back. Now let's double check and make sure that I indeed cannot collide with it. Perfect. Congratulations, you just scripted your first fading part. If you enjoyed this video on scripting a fading part, we encourage you to check out all of our other Roblox videos. In addition, we invite you to join us in a live session. Come check out the Roblox Studio introductory course for free with Create and Learn. Visit our website and sign up for a no obligation class to see if it's something that you and your family are interested in learning more about. Be sure to hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another Roblox Studio video.